Hi folks, today I'm going to be showing you how to take a Cantrip Candles tin, or any tin, and turn it into your own dice container. First of all, I really love Cantrip Candles like scents, and as soon as I got these tins, I had the idea to make a dice vault or like a, a hero vault, something like that, that you can put things in it, um, just because they're such a great size and I love the design on it and everything. Um, I'll be interested to see it after I get the rest of the wax out, if it still has that fantastic scent. Um, that'd be cool. But we're gonna dive in. So this is a project I've been wanting to do for a couple of years and I'm finally getting around to it. Okay, so um, I have burned through pretty much all of this. This wax down kind of at the bottom is just kind of, um, you know, there's not enough left really to continue burning. So the first step is going to be getting this wax out. Um, and I will say uh, this is going to be a little different from my other tutorials because I'm kind of figuring it out as I go. So, you know, bear with me. <laughs> so first of all, I'm gonna see if I can get this um, bit out, the center where the, um, nope, uh, wick is. That's the word for it. Okay, that came out actually pretty easy. So I just used a pair of pliers, grabbed the little bit of the wick, and it came out. So yeah, you can see there's not a ton of wax left. I have heard that you can pour hot water in here, but first of all, I'm going to use, uh, this is just a like sculpting tool. You could probably use a screwdriver or something like that. Just see if I can kind of, oh, this is working great. So I'm just going to push around. Whoop. Definitely getting some chunks out. And yeah, you can see that's actually doing a pretty good job. Oh God, this smells so good. This is the Library Scriptorium. It's my favorite scent um, that we've gotten. Although, I kept meaning to order the Autumn's Bounty and uh, never got around to it. I think that that sounded fantastic as well. All right, so let's dump out the rest of this wax. Scrapey, scrapey. It's like, you know, if you're making cookies, you're trying to get the last of the time out. I've been making a lot of cookies this week. So there you go, that's most of it. All right, so now I'm going to step away and uh, take this to the kitchen and run some hot water into it, try and get the rest of that wax off, maybe use a sponge, uh, and I'll be right back. That worked pretty well. You can see kind of here, I went ahead and um, all I did was I poured some boiling water into this, let it sit for about 30 seconds, and then very carefully poured it out. I will say, be very careful, use like oven mitts, gloves, a towel, something like that, because uh, this tin got very, very hot. It is metal. It will conduct heat. And I also tried to be pretty careful. I got a little bit of water um, on the label. Uh, just because I do like the look of this label. If you are less concerned with that, you could go ahead and take the label off, use some like gunk remover to take off any adhesive. So I just have um, some black foam. This foam came in something uh, that was mailed to us. Uh, so you could probably easily find foam. Um, I know the lots of game stores sell foam that is, is specifically designed to like be cut out for miniature storage, find it at a craft store, or just, you know, if you get sent something that has foam in it, save it for crafts. I figured I can probably get about five out of this. And because I want it to fit inside of this, I'm actually gonna make a template of the inside um, instead of cutting to the outside. So to do that, I'm gonna grab a piece of paper, just a piece of scrap paper that I doodled a bunch of stuff on, got some scissors and an exacto knife. All right, so I'm just going to trace around. Sorry, hopefully you saw that. Trace around, ta-da! That, that's not a great circle. Let's do that again. All right, that's a much better circle. And now I'm gonna cut this out. I'm gonna use scissors to cut this out. I find it's easier with to use scissors for circles than an exacto knife. Um, but, you know, do whatever works for you. 
almost there. So close. Okay. So there we have a little cutout. And now I'm going to check. So yeah, this cutout is a little big. So it's a little big, so I'm gonna just trim it down a little. Um, I'm hopefully going to be able to uh, get as much, as many circles out of the foam as possible, because I want it to be nice and snug in there for my dice. So my dice are snug as a bug in a rug, as the saying goes. I don't know who wants to be a bug in a rug. Not me. All right, I think that's a full circle. All right, so there we have that. So yeah, that fits pretty much perfectly. Oh, I can't get it out. There we go. I'm gonna try using a gel pen to trace these out. Um, we'll see how well this goes. You could use some chalk, maybe even pencil, um, whatever will work for you that you have. Uh, you know, if you have some foam that is not black, you can use like a black Sharpie, something like that. I like to plan out, so yeah, I don't quite have enough space to do six, but I definitely have space for five, which should be plenty. I think I'm really only going to need four, but this also means that if I screw one up, I have a little wiggle. All right, so there you can see all five drawn out. I'm gonna try starting with the scissors and then see, um, you know, how that goes. I might switch to the X-Acto knife if I need to. And these are not like fancy dancy fabric scissors. Uh, they are <laughs> kids safety scissors, uh, cause that's what I have. Um, I do have some fancy sewing scissors but I don't really want to use those on the phone. Okay, this seems to be working pretty well. So you will see I got a little bit of an angle there, um, so try and keep your scissors as upright as possible as you're cutting. I'm gonna cut this first one out, plunk it in the tin just to see how it fits, make sure it's gonna work, and then I will cut the rest of them out. Um, and because it is foam, it will stretch a little, so as you're cutting around, try and not pull at it too much so you don't distort the shape that much. All right, so there's that circle. Let's see how it fits. Yeah, that's a nice snug fit. And I'm gonna repeat that process with the next four, and I'll get back to you once that's done. Okay, so now that we've got um, all four cut out, or five actually, um, and you know, they all fit in there super snug, um, but don't actually need all five, only needed four. This uh, foam is just under half an inch. So I could basically just stop here. So there's the dice in the thing, put the lid on, no sound of dice. But to make it a little bit more secure, I'm gonna go ahead and glue these down just to make sure that they don't go anywhere. I'm actually gonna cut one of them out um, because actually with all of them in, it's a little too snug. So I'm gonna, gonna make a nice little indentation in one and I'm also gonna trim one down so when I put the lid on, it's a little, it's not kind of interfering there. So yeah, I'm gonna glue this bottom one in. Um, I'm just going to try using some tacky glue. Don't take the top off. <laughs> again. All right, so now we're just going to use um, a crappy crap paintbrush to paint this tacky glue on. As I said, kind of figuring it out as we go on this one. We're learning together. And especially on this bottom one, I'm not being super precise. I'm just trying to get enough on there. I am going to kind of paint and I hope you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just painting onto there with the glue to kind of really get in that corner so that 
hopefully it will stick a little bit better. Now, because you are using uh, metal and a uh, foam, you know, if you don't have like a tacky glue spray on, adhesive might also work. Yeah, that's actually sticking. Just pushing it in with my thumbs. Um, if you're wondering what this is, uh, don't juice or uh, zest limes or lemons and then walk outside to take stuff to the barbecue without thoroughly washing your hands because it causes you to get these little tiny sunburns. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna let this sit for a little bit and I'm going to take the piece that I want to go in here. I'm just gonna trim it down because we probably really only want it to fall to that bit. And I'm trimming very small bits and I'm gonna kind of test it as I go. If it's a little bit better, yeah, and it's a little easier to slide onto the top. Come up. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to glue this down. Repeat the same process with the painting on. Pretty nice and thick layer onto the metal. And this bit, especially because it's kind of gonna get handled a little bit more, I do want a little bit more of this really nice solid glue base uh, to help hold it on. So now I'm going to position this on. Push it down, push it down. Nice and stamp it down. And yeah, hey look, I can pick it up holding the uh, foam. That's a good sign. Before I step away again, um, I'm just going to figure out, I think this is the one that I'm going to do the cutout in the center. I'm gonna draw out kind of what I th think will work. I'm just eyeballing this. You could, um, you know, easily grab something to not be eyeballing this. What are they called? Not, is it a protractor? I feel like that's the wrong word. Compass? Compass? Let me know in the comments below what, what that little, like, tool that you use to draw circles with is called. Okay, so now that I've got that drawn in, I'm going to go in with my X-Acto knife, being careful, and I'm going to slowly... Nope, X-Acto blade not really working. So we're going to do a different method. Fold the thing in half, take your scissors, go snip till you get a hole. Then we'll... Oh, these scissors are not the sharpest. Probably maybe get sharper scissors for this. Cut out and then cut your way around the circle. There we go. All right. Again, not the smoothest. Maybe could go through and uh, smooth up some of these little bits here if you want. So yeah, so essentially I'll layer these in. So we'll go there and then the dice or the miniature. You could uh, decide to do this as a place for the miniature. We'll have like a nice little pocket that they can sit in. So I've now let that dry. Uh, this is nice and stuck together. This is nice stuck on. This is nice and stuck in. Um, okay, so now we're going to glue this bit into here and also glue the little ring on. We're gonna let all this dry for a little bit of time and then we will come back and put it all together and hopefully be done. All right, folks, here is the finished dice vault. Um, might be a little hard to see because it's black. I did go ahead and I just took a permanent marker and just colored over that um, gel pen that I used to make it look nice. There's the lid. It's nice together. There you go. And let's put the dice in and see how that works. So, you know, this is not something that is going to keep your dice completely separate, but it's not going to let them, because they're nice and snug and secure, I can shake this all around. They're not going there. Lid's not coming off. Um, it's going to keep the dice from 
getting knocked around. So if you have a nicer set of dice, but maybe, um, you know, haven't saved up yet for a super nice dice vault, or you just have a set of dice or a mini that you want to keep from rattling around in your bag, pretty good. This is a pretty good way to go. It also will work for putting a little mini in there. And he's not going anywhere. And pull it out. And look, because it's foam, it's going to be able to hold it in there nice and safe, nice and tucked in um, to take with you. That's how to turn a cantrip candles tin or any small tin into your own dice or hero vault. Without factoring in drying time, this took me less than an hour to make. With drying time, I still made it within one day. So pretty easy to, you know, cut things out, glue it all together, let it sit and dry, and then there you go. You've got your own dice vault. So if you use this tutorial, go ahead and leave us a comment down below. Tag us on social media, Twitter, Instagram. Um, I'd love to see how this turns out for you. A big thanks to our patrons, especially Arvi. If you want to support our channel, you can head over to our Patreon page and check out the perks of being a patron. And if you enjoyed this video, I hope you give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. All right, I'll see you next time on Roll for Initiative. Bye. Open this thing. Oh, okay.